So another type, another topic that we mentioned a little bit before is so-called massive transformation. Big transformation, massive transformation. Here I'm going to show a phase diagram, actually part of a phase diagram, a binary phase diagram between copper and uh, zinc. Binary, I'm only showing one side, the left side of this copper zinc phase diagram. This should be quite often liquid. This is our, this region is our a single phase alpha with what type of structure? Copper, FCC structure, but with significant amount of zinc dissolved uniformly, randomly in it. Make sense? And this is what we call beta phase zinc. It has a different structure. Okay. If we have something like this composition as what we illustrate, this dashed line composition and uh, let's say initially we are at here which phase beta phase initially we are at a beta phase and then if we go quench quickly from here to here do you see i can cross this between single phase this is what single phase or two phase region Two phase region. What people observe if you do it quickly, you can go through this two phase region without forming the secondary phase and go directly back into alpha and bracket, single phase. You see that? The same composition. You are not really changing composition, just going from single phase region to two phase region. And you do that quickly by passing, essentially, read by passing the precipitation of the two-phase stage. Because this is alpha, this is beta. In between, it's always what? Alpha plus beta. Remember, in phase diagram, between single phase, single phase region, that is two-phase region but for binary phase diagram. So this is always binary. But if you do it quickly, you can so-called read to yourself. Bypass, shortcut, kind of, the precipitation of the two-phase region, which you go from single phase to single phase with a sudden change in what? Crystal structure quite often, lattice parameter, but not in what? From here to here. Does it change in composition? No, it's a still roughly 36% whatever of zinc in it. Make sense? So this is types of transformation, people call it a massive transformation. It's a so-called diffusion lens. Why diffusion lens? From single phase to single phase. It without changing composition. From here to here. Is that changing composition? No, there's no need in change composition. So diffusion lens, but it's a type of so-called civilian. The atoms are move a little bit still random, randomly, happening in a relatively high cooling rate, bypassing the precipitation or two-phase stage. This is called massive transformation from beta to alpha directly, from beta to alpha directly for the same composition. And the feature, as we mentioned, same composition, no long-range diffusion. I do not need long-range diffusion because it's the same material, same composition. And quite often it's so-called interface controlled because the diffusion doesn't involve really, I don't need the composition change. It's quite often not controlled by diffusion. Then it's controlled by the interfacial reaction or so-called interface control. People find irregular incoherent interface between the beta one and the alpha one, they quite often have very different uh, crystal structure. And because of that very different crystal structure, they don't try to even match. Irreg that's what we mean, incoherent, irregular interface. Make sense? And then, fast. You have to do it quickly. Otherwise, what is going to happen? If you cool it slowly, what is going to happen? Go through the two-phase precipitation stage, and eventually the other phase disappears, go back. Make sense? You have to be fast. And then, but on the other hand, people, what people observe is hard to completely avoid the precipitate nucleation. Even though you do it quickly, it's hard to completely avoid some of the alpha phase coming out as the distinct interface. 
And it may also go through so-called uh, Martin side phase transformation, which we will talk about uh, later at even higher cooling rate. Okay, we said you have to do it fast, relatively fast. And if we do it too fast, it will go through the Martin side transformation, which is not civilian. We call it a military phase type of transformation. Okay. And then massive transformation, the cooling rate, it's very important. I'm showing here a so-called uh, TTT diagram. T, one T is for, look at where I'm pointing, capital T for temperature, the other T for time, the third T is for these types of so-called uh, transformation or percentage of transformation. This type of curve, the nose-shaped curve, people call it uh, TTT curve or TTT diagram. Okay, and the other, this one, two, three, four, are just the different so-called cooling profile. Make sense? Cooling profile, which means you change the temperature with respect to Time, which way? Increase temperature or decrease in temperature? Decrease in temperature. That's your from this one, two, three, and four, they are just the different types of so called cooling curves. How fast you cool the temperature? Which one cool fastest? If this is log time, increase in time, the longer the time means the slower the cooling. So number one is slowest cooling, while number four is probably the fastest cooling and these type of re repeat with me no shaped curve people call them ttt phase ttt diagram temperature time and uh, zero or 50 or 100 that's quite often for so-called percentage transformation ttt the last t for transformation curve okay what essentially it means is that okay when you have a material, if we go from high temperature to this particular temperature, and then we wait certain time, we are going to first zero means what? Started to have transformation. And then if we wait for longer, we run into 50 means what? The precipitation is 50% complete. And if we go further, we may go into so called 90%. Each of these nose shaped curve just represent the same extent of precipitation or phase transformation. Make sense? Okay. And uh, this is for precipitation, this is for massing. And further below, we have so called Martin side, which we will talk about further. But essentially what we mean is, okay, if we cool it to very low temperature and then started to cool it, when I cool to this point, what happens? I started to have a little bit of precipitate, the secondary precipitate. And then as I cool it slowly, gradually, I become what? 50% of precipitation finished, and I keep going, I go to probably 90%. On the other hand, if I cool it a little bit, what? Two versus one, faster or slower? Faster. If I cool it a little bit faster, I cool it to a little bit lower temperature, I started to have what? First bit of precipitate. And then I continue to cool, I run into 50%. But what people observe is from precipitation. If I quit to at three profile, temperature profile of three, I'm now faster than both two and one. I become something like this. Do you see it kind of missed the tip of the, what we call nose shaped TTT curve? If I quit like three, what does that mean? Am I going to form the precipitation? Based on this plot, I'm too fast. I'm too fast. I'm cooling it too fast. When I'm reaching here, that's zero 
percent of precipitate. Remember, we said okay, the nucleation of the precipitate quite often the rate is also the so called nose shaped curve. When temperature is high, I have enough what? Diffusion, right? My kinetic energy is high, but I have too low of so called uh, under cooling. When that temperature is high, I have too low under cooling. I don't have pre nucleation. The precipitate doesn't nucleate, even if I wait long enough. On the other hand, when I'm too low temperature, when I'm already here, I have enough what? So called the critical cluster. I have enough critical cluster, but what doesn't really happen when the temperature is too low? I'm not really ha having diffusion. I'm not adding any atom to the so called existing critical cluster, which means that cluster stays there forever without really becoming the new secondary precipitate phase. So that's what happens. When I'm cool it fast enough, I'm bypassing this one, two, this nose tip. I'm directly forming here. And then what happens for that copper bra actually copper zinc system is uh, now I'm going directly from beta phase to alpha phase without going through the precipitate. I have this zero 100% so called a massive transformation without really forming the precipitation stage, without having the nucleation growth process. Okay. And if we cool it effect, that's what we said. Fast infant. If we cool it fast enough, fast enough, no nucleation growth of the precipitate, then it would go through the so called a massive transformation, but slow enough so that we don't run into modern side, which is diffusion less but military. We'll talk about them a little bit later. Modern side trans transformation. It doesn't go into here. The number three is what we are talking about here. Okay?